Hey guys, welcome to the channel. This is a repost video, and the reason I'm reposting it is because I did it live the first time, and I missed a step in the middle that made it very challenging for me to recover. On live, it's just very difficult to recover because you can't edit. And for that reason, I didn't like the video. I watched it when it was over, and I simply didn't like it. So I'm taking the original video down, and I'm redoing the video, but this time it's not live, it'll be production. So with that in mind, if you've already seen the OpenTX to EdgeTX Masterclass conversion video and you're satisfied with the process, feel free to skip this video. If you want to see the video done the correct way with all the steps in the right order, then stick around and, and enjoy. What I'll tell you about this video is the intention in this video is to show you how to convert from OpenTX to EdgeTX without any dependency on software drivers, DFU mode, USB drivers, software programs, or anything else. This is intended to be basically a master class where we're gonna start from scratch and install EdgeTX on an OpenTX radio without any requirements of using any other software other than our SD card and our radio itself, plus the software we have to use to make the conversion to Edge. So stick around and enjoy the video. I'm running OpenTX and I've got version 2.3.15. That's OpenTX. And I wanna show you a couple of different things on the radio as well so you understand where we're starting and where we're gonna end. So I'm gonna long press the jog dial and hit select model. And you can see I've got two categories, planes and helis. In the heli category, I've got my Tron 7. In the plane category, I've got a Katana, a Dart 250, and an Escapade MX, okay? So uh, just a couple of airplanes to show you that I actually have models set up on this, on this radio. And then in the system area, I'm gonna go over to the radio settings and show you under global functions, I've got SB1, and we'll add one. I'm gonna add another one just so you see it. And the idea is to make sure that we know we have some radio settings that get converted. So I'm just gonna do on, and I'm gonna set it to volume, and I'm gonna use S1 as the controller, and I'll turn that on. So now there's a couple radio settings that you'll be able to recognize later in the video after we've converted to Edge, okay? So the first thing we're gonna do, now that you've seen I've got an OpenTX radio with a couple of models and a couple radio settings, that sets the stage for the process that we're about to undertake. And what I'm gonna do now is switch over to a Blackboard and cover some rules. The rules are simple. The first thing you need to do is back up your SD card. You're told, you're warned, please make sure you do it. The next thing you need to do is make sure your card is formatted as FAT32. Don't use EXTFS or NTFS or any other exotic file system. It has to be FAT32. And your card needs to be 32 gigs or smaller. And I'll just point out that the standard card works just fine. You will not run out of space for a very long time unless you do a lot of music or other big files for some reason on your card. If you're just using normal radio data, 256 megs will last a very long time. The next thing is you have to be able to read and write to an SD card. I cannot be in the business of supporting you guys if you can't figure out how to read and write an SD card on your computer. That's up to you. If you're stuck on this and you just can't seem to figure it out, get a teenager to give you some help and figure out how to write to your SD card because without that, you can't really proceed any further, okay? You have to be able to do that. I really can't be in the business supporting questions on why you can't read or write to your SD card. You have to work that one out yourself. The next thing we'll talk about and cover, and this is where I made the mistake in the live video, is you gotta flash the EdgeTX bootloader first because without that, you can't flash the EdgeTX firmware and that just creates a mess. So I'm gonna show you how to flash the EdgeTX bootloader. We're gonna do that first. And after that, we'll install all the other software and complete the conversion. I gotta put a caveat that as of 6.5.22, these are the current versions of software. OpenTX 2.3.15 is what I'm gonna use, EdgeTX 2.7.1 and the MPM 1337. If you're watching this at some point in the future, these numbers may change. There may be a, a later version of OpenTX, a later version of EdgeTX. Don't let that throw you off the track. Uh, again, also the links might change a little bit, and if they do, you're gonna have to do a little bit of legwork, right? Because I can't predict the future. So you have to do a little legwork if these links and the version numbers change, but the process generally will be the same, okay? I don't expect huge changes in how these things are done over time. So I just have to put that caveat out there that don't, don't let version numbers throw you off or if the links break at some point in the future, I can't control that. Just use Google and go search for it. So I, I wanted to put that out there because it's important to understand that things change over time. 
Okay, I'll start out by bring up, bringing up a browser, and the first thing we're gonna do is take a quick little look at the Edge TX GitHub. Again, links in the description for this. You don't have to worry about trapping it or writing it down furiously while you're watching a video. So on the Edge TX GitHub, you'll see that there's a, several different places where you can download software. The first thing we need to do is grab the firmware. So we're gonna look at 2.7.1 firmware, and here is the direct link in the description. And the way to find that on the GitHub itself is you click on the Edge TX project and then click Edge TX. And when you do that over here on the right hand side, you'll see this word releases and the current release as of this video is Edge TX Black Pearl 2.7.1. When you click on that, that'll bring you to a list of files that you can download. Notice you've got companion for Linux, companion for Mac, companion for Windows, the 32-bit version and the 64-bit version. And this is the file that we're interested in, Edge TX firmware 2.7.1.zip. I have my browser set to download these files direct to the desktop, so I'm gonna click on this file, and you can see right here, I've got a zip file right here, that's the firmware, right? That's the first thing that we're looking for. The next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna grab the sounds for Edge TX. And we'll do that by going back to the main Edge TX directory or project, and we'll scroll down and we'll look for sounds. So see right here, we've got Edge TX SD card sounds. We'll click on that. And then when we click on that, we same area, we look over here under releases 2.5.3 and we click on that link. And that's gonna bring us to the sounds downloads. And in the sounds area, you've got a bunch of different languages. There's Chinese, Czech, German, English, Spanish, French, Italian, Portuguese, and Russian. I speak English, so I'm gonna grab the EN folder, EN 2.5.3, that's current as of today. So I'm gonna grab that one. And now that is on my desktop. All right, we'll go back to the project page. And the next thing we need to grab are themes. So we're gonna grab the themes folder, that's edgetxthemes.zip. So we'll go back to the project page and we'll scroll down until we find themes. There's, there we go, there are the themes. So click on that. And then if we go over to the right-hand side, we see latest themes package, we'll click on that one and you can see edgetx themes right there. So we'll just click on that one. And now we've got our themes right here on the desktop. Next one is the latest SD card. So we'll grab that one next. We'll go back to the project page and we'll look for the SD card. That's right here, Edge TX SD card. We'll click on that. And again, we'll go over to the right-hand side and click on latest. And there are a couple of different files in here. You see Horus, NV14, Tyrannus X7, X9. It's important to understand if you're using a color radio, in my case, I'm using the TX16S, that is going to be in the Horus zip file. So if you're using a TX16 or a T16 or a Jumper T18 or any of those color screens other than like the NV14, you're probably gonna need the Horus uh, download. If you're using a Flysky NV14, grab that one. And of course, if you've got Tyrannus, use one of the Tyrannus targets or a black and white, you might use the Tyrannus target as well. Okay, so I need Horus.zip, I'll click on that. And that is now downloaded and on my desktop. And that's it for Edge. We've got everything we need off of Edge. We've got the firmware, we've got our sounds, we've got our themes and the SD card. Next up will be the firmware for the multi-protocol module. I've got that linked in the description as well. Simply go over to the multi-protocol firmware page and I'll point out that the link that I provided takes you directly to the TX16S. But if you have a different radio, you can select your radio in this dropdown list. So you've got um, Radio King, you've got Radio Master T8, TX12, TX16S, and so on. So pick the right radio. In my case, it's TX16S with an internal 4-in-1 module. And then on the right-hand side, we're looking for the latest stable release. As of this video, it's 1.3.3.7. And then the module type is a four in one STM32 for the Radio Master TX16S. If you've got a jumper five in one, you'd choose this one, or if you've got a T-Lite five in one, you'd choose this one. So there are other options. You need to make sure you know which one you need. In my case, I need the four in one STM32. That's the correct option for a Radio Master TX16S. For radio type, we're gonna choose Serial, Open TX, uh, Ersky TX or ER9X. Just click that one, that's the correct option. And then for channel order, I prefer AETR, so I will click that. And what happens is you'll see a list of files you can download at the bottom of the screen now, including the binary, which is the multi-protocol firmware itself, a multi-text and a multi-Lewis script file. So we'll click on all three of those and download them. There's the binary, there's the multi-text, and here are the Lua scripts for the multi-protocol module. And you can see I've got those right here on the left, the binary, multi-text, 
text and the Lua script file. Okay, we've got the firmware, we've got the Lua. Next, we need to grab the Free Sky stabilizer material. So go to Google and type Free Sky SXR Lua script. And when you type that in, it'll be the very first link. And you'll scroll down on, it takes a little while, but you'll scroll down to the bottom and look for stabilization receiver. And we're gonna take the Lua script SXR and R9. And I'm just gonna click on that real quick, make sure I have the right one, and we'll hit download. So now we've got our SXR and R9 FreeSky Lua scripts. The next thing we wanna do is go grab the TBS Agent Lite stuff. So Google TBS Agent Lite Lua. And when you click on the very first link, it'll bring you to the TBS downloads page and just scroll down and look for Agent Lite. That's the one we want for the radio. Here's Agent Lite. And here's the download. Current version is 0.96. We'll click on that and grab the Agent Lite Lua scripts. And then the last thing we want to grab our ELRS Lua script, and that'll be the first link, ELRS Lua script. And on this one, here's the option right at the very top, download the ELRS V2 Lua script. Just simply right click on that and hit save link as, and you'll see a pop-up on your desktop. Make sure the type is Lua and the extension Lua on the end of the file. Just leave that alone. Don't touch that. Just leave it alone. And we'll hit save. Okay, that's it. We've now downloaded all the software we need. We've got the Express LRS Lua, the TBS Agent Lite, the Free Sky Lua. There are other scripts out there like iNav or Yapu. I'm not gonna do those today because I've done a dedicated video on iNav and I don't use Yapu. So for that reason, we're gonna skip over those for today. All right, now that we've got all of our software downloaded, the next thing we need to do, and this is where I made the mistake in the live videos, we need to flash the bootloader. And the reason we need to flash the bootloader is because the OpenTX bootloader that's on your OpenTX radio does not like to flash EdgeTX. It only wants to flash OpenTX, and that's fine. So in order to flash EdgeTX, we need to put an EdgeTX bootloader on the radio. It's actually very simple to do, so we're gonna walk through that process now. And we're gonna start out by removing the, SD I'll turn the radio off first. Then we'll remove the SD card. And when the reason we're going to remove the SD card is because I told you, I don't want to rely on any drivers. I don't want to rely on any software or USB drivers or anything else. So we're going to do it the old school way by manipulating the data on the SD card directly. Now notice to get this card out, I just use the little sharp end of a mechanical pencil and I pr depress the card and it pops it up. Now, one of the things I hear from people all the time, and this is one of the reasons I don't take my cards out of my radio, is that they have a habit of disappearing into the case. And the reason for that is I think because people put them in at an angle. So I'll put the radio on the side and what you don't wanna do is insert the card at an angle like that or like that. You wanna put it in straight up and down and then get a look at the slot. You know, Look inside the radio at that slot you're looking for where that slot is. And as long as they're lined up and you put that card straight in, it should just drop right into the slot and then you can use your tool to push the card in and seat it, okay? But before we do that, the first thing I'm gonna do is take our Edge TX binary, the firmware, the Edge TX firmware, and we're gonna put it on this SD card. So I'm gonna pop this card into my computer and you'll see a pop-up screen over here that allows us to gain access to the card. I'm gonna hide the browser because we don't need that anymore. And I'm gonna open the Edge TX firmware zip file and we're gonna look for the firmware. I don't need the radio, so let me hide the radio real quick. So we're gonna look for the firmware that we need and it is the TX16S right here. Now that's for my radio, I'm using a TX16S. If you're using a, a T Pro or a T18 or a T16, you'll use a different firmware. So pay attention, don't just grab a TX16S and flash it to uh, a FreeSky Tyrannus T9 or, or X9. Don't do that, All right? Make sure you pick the right firmware. In my case, it's TX16S. I'm gonna drag that over to the firmware directory on the OpenTX card. That's the card that I just put in the computer. And you can see in here, I've got the file I just copied was a55aff0.bin. I'm gonna erase these just to avoid confusion. Those are some leftovers. We'll just get rid of those. So here's the one that we care about right there, TX16S a55aff00.bin, okay? Now we're gonna put that card back in our radio, remove the card from the computer, we're gonna set the card in the radio slot straight up and down, just make sure it's straight up and down. Oh, and the metal tabs go up, they face the display screen, that's key. Okay, so metal tabs are up and we'll simply take our pencil or sharp object, fingernail, uh, hobby number 11 if you got it, 
and press that card in until it latches and then let go and that should be it it should be seated all right now i'm going to turn the radio on and remember all we've done at this point is copy the edge tx firmware onto the sd card firmware folder that's all i've done welcome to open tx okay so we're back in open tx now we're going to press the system button and navigate over to the sd card file manager and we're going to click on the firmware folder and we're going to look for that tx16s a55 aff0.bin we'll highlight that and then press on the jog dial and you'll see this little menu pop up and we're going to select flash bootloader so flash bootloader and you see that that's writing now okay so now we've written the edge tx bootloader to our open tx radio okay now we can verify that simply by turning the radio off holding t4 and t1 inbound and then powering on the radio and when we do that you now see we've got edge tx bootloader 2.7.1 now we're ready to proceed with flashing everything that we need to flash and installing all the software on the radio okay so we'll just simply turn the radio off now now i'm going to take the card back out of the radio i'm going to use my pointer here pop that card out and we're going to put it in the computer okay I'm putting the card in the computer and now we're going to start blowing stuff away and cleaning off the old stuff that we no longer need. Now, what I want to keep is I because I already put the firmware in the firmware folder. I'm going to keep that one. I'm also going to keep my images because in my images folder, I've got all the model images for my radio that I want to keep. So I don't want to delete those. I'm going to keep those. But I am going to get rid of my logs folder. That's going to go away. I'm going to keep the models folder because that's where our model settings are. So remember the models that I showed you were the Katana, the Dart 350, the Escapade MX, and the Tron helicopter. That's what these files represent. Okay, so we don't delete those. We want to keep those because they'll be converted from OpenTX to Edge. In the radio folder, notice we've got models.txt and radio.bin. These two files, radio.bin, are your radio settings. That's where your things like your global functions go and your radio settings that you use in the, in the radio setup screen, that they belong in that file. And then the models.txt is the category listing of your models. So notice I've got in here planes and heli. And then under planes, I've got models one, two, and three. And under heli, I've got model four. That is the katana the DAR250, the Escapade MX, and the Tron 7. Okay, so that's a models.txt file. Now, when we're done, this is gonna change. That models.txt file will no longer be needed once we're converted to Edge TX. All right, so we're gonna keep the radio folder, but now we're gonna get rid of all the other stuff. We're gonna get rid of scripts. That's gonna be gone. And I'm gonna hide the radio so you guys can see what's going on on the desktop. So we're gonna get rid of the scripts folder. We're going to get rid of the sounds folder. Now, if you have Amber and you want to keep your custom sounds because you've done some work on there, that's fine. You can. I want a fresh install of Edge TX. So I'm going to show you how to make it completely 100% Edge. We're going to get rid of the themes folder. We'll just hit yes on that. Uh, the utilities folder, that's gone. Goodbye. The widgets folder, we're going to get rid of that. Goodbye. And we'll get rid of the OpenTX SD card version text file. So all we're left with at the end is a firmware folder, an images folder with our pictures, our models, and our radio settings. Okay, that's all we've got on this card. Everything else is gone. Now, we've already done the firmware, so I'm going to take that, S that zip file and get rid of it. I'm just going to delete it because we don't really need it anymore. The next thing I'm going to do is open up the SD card contents. So I'm going to take the Horus zip file, and you might recognize this file structure, right? This looks similar to all the stuff I just deleted. I'm going to take these files and drag them over to the root of my SD card on the radio. Now, keep in mind, it's not in the radio, it's in the computer, but I'm going to drag it over there. Now, I get it questioned a lot. Hey, do you have to unzip it first? And what happens if you see messages about overwriting? Just hit override or replace. It's fine. Don't worry about that. And you do not have to unzip. You do not have to hit this extract button and unzip the contents first. On Windows, if you take the zip file contents and copy them to an unarchived location, it unzips them for you in the process. So you don't need to worry about that. So now we've copied over the SD card contents, so we can get rid of horus.zip. We'll just delete that. The next thing we'll take a look at are the sounds folder. Now notice there are sounds in here, but there's no sound files. There's a sound folder, but no sound files. So we'll open up the SD card sounds folder. And in the zip, you can see we've got EN and a whole bunch of files, right? So we'll go back to the root here and we're just going to take this sounds folder and drag it onto our SD card and let it go. Again, you do not have to unzip first. It's an unnecessary step. Just drag it to the root of your SD card and let it go. 
I also get asked questions about what is the root. The root is the base directory of your SD card. So I get there. It's easy to get there. If you're navigating around and you're clicking on stuff and you want to go back to the root, it's easy to do it. But just by clicking on Windows right here, the drive letter of your SD card, just click on that and that brings you back to the root. OK, so our sounds file is copied over. Our sounds files are copied over. Now we can delete that one. We'll get rid of that archive. We no longer need it. Next, we're going to put themes in. So on the themes folder, you notice they've already got edge TX. That's the default. And there's a couple fly me to the moon uh, themes. Those are by the developers. So they, they give you a couple of themes to begin with. But the themes archive is different. If you look in the themes archive that I downloaded, it is all the themes that all the various edge TX contributors have uploaded, including the ones from RCVR, including my Halloween, my USA high contrast are all in there as well. And a new one that I came up with called cool blue. So anyway, we'll go into themes folder and we're going to take this themes folder and drag it into the root of our SD card. Oops, I almost made a mistake. You see how in the themes folder, we don't want to be there. We want to be here in the root. So we'll take the themes folder and drop it off in the root of the SD card and let her rip. And it says there are eight files with the same name. We're going to go ahead and replace them. That's fine. And now we're done with themes. We can delete that one as well. All right, next up are some of our Lua scripts. So we're going to unpack the uh, multi Lua script. These came from the NPM, okay? And see that there's a scripts folder. We're just going to take that scripts folder and drop it off and put it in the root of our SD card. And that one goes really fast. I don't really see the copy window. Yeah, I, it didn't. It goes really fast. So we're done with that one already. That's the multi Lua scripts. We'll delete that. Actually, let me show you what's in there real quick before I delete it. So in the scripts folder under tools, this is where you get you get your DSM Lua, your Gropner Lua, the multi-channel updater, the multi-config, multi-OLI, and the PID DSM Lua, okay? That all comes from the NPM firmware download page. So we're gonna get rid of that now that I've copied it already. Um, I also need to do multi.txt. That was another file that came from the multi-protocol downloader. And I'm just gonna take that multi.txt file and drag it into the scripts tools folder and let that go. Now we can delete that off of our desktop. The next set of Lua's that we'll work on are the FreeSky SXR R9 Lua's. Now notice this one doesn't use the root directory. You see there's a Lua script, two Lua scripts in here. There's FreeSky SXR and XSR R9S Calibrate. So these are gonna get dropped off in the scripts tools folder because there are Lua scripts already. So we're just gonna drop those off in the tools folder. We'll let those go. There we go. We can delete that one now. And the last one that we will add is the TBS Agent Lite. So I'll click on that one. And TBS Agent Lite, same deal. They don't give you the root or scripts folder. You got a Lua script right here. So we're going to just drag those and drop them off in our tools folder on the radio. Okay. So that's TBS Agent Lite. We can get rid of that one. And we only have two left. We've got our Express LRS Lua. That's this one, the one that we downloaded. We're going to drag this into the scripts or the scripts tools folder and let it go. We'll delete that off of our desktop. And the only thing left at this point is our binary file for the multi protocol module. And we're going to put that in our firmware folder. So we're just simply going to drop this in here and I've already got one in there, but I'm going to replace it. So we'll replace that one. And there we go. Now we've got our multi protocol module firmware in there and we can delete that. Okay. That's the software distribution. You can take a blank SD card and do what I just showed you and start completely from scratch, or you can start like I showed you how to do with an open TX SD card. Either one will work. If you want to start with a blank or start fresh, you can do it the way I just showed you. Okay, now we've got all the software we need on the SD card. So what we're going to do is take the SD card off the computer and we're going to put it in the radio. So I'm going to bring up the radio real quick. And uh, we'll take the SD card off the computer and I've got it in my hand now. And we're simply going to put it in the bottom of the radio in its slot. Remember, put it in straight up and down and then use a sharp instrument, a pointy instrument that's small and just press down on that card until you feel it latch and let it go. That's all you've got to do. And that should be the last time that we have to do anything with the card outside of the radio for this example. I'm going to switch over to the big camera and let's start taking a look at what's going to happen next. The next step, now that we've got our Edge TX bootloader on the radio, is to boot into bootloader mode. And we'll do that by pressing T4 and T1 in and turning on the radio. And now we've got the option to write firmware. So I will select write firmware, and I'm going to scroll all the way down to the bottom where we have TX16S 
855-AFF0.BIN. With the Edge TX firmware highlighted, I'll press enter on the jog dial and then I'll long press and that will begin the right process of putting Edge TX firmware on the radio. Okay, now that the writing is complete, we'll hit the return button and we'll just click on exit in the bootloader and that'll reboot the radio and put us back into Edge TX. So Edge TX now is telling us, hey, we have to do an SD card conversion. And the reason for that is, is because it's seeing your old binary files for your models and the binary file for your radio setup. And it's telling you, I need to change this. Now I've seen this question so many times. Hey, do I have to go from OpenTX to Edge TX 2.5 and then 2.6 and then 2.7? The answer is no. You can go directly from OpenTX 2.3.15, which we did. Remember the Blackboard? We were on OpenTX version 2.3.15 directly to Edge TX 2.7.1. Okay, so we can make that switch directly. And 2.7 is offering to make the conversion. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this up because I really want you guys to watch. It's going to happen real fast. Pay attention to the messages on the screen. It's going to go by real quick. I'm going to hit the go button and you're going to see a conversion message go across the screen. So here we go that converting so we've converted right away that fast all of our models and radio settings to yaml format so it's complaining about my throttle not being reduced so there we go i've reduced it now here's the next thing that gets people is when they make the conversion they see this screen and they think oh i lost all my models but that's not really true that's not what happened and here's how you can verify if you touch the screen and hit model select Notice that I've got my Tron helicopter here, and if I hit page left, I've got my airplane category with my katana, my dart, and my escapade. What you're seeing is the widgets are gone. The models are still there, but the widgets are gone. So I'm going to select the katana. We'll hit select model, and then I'm going to hit the telemetry button here on the left-hand side, and we're going to set up our widgets, and I'm going to add my model. This is the part that's unfortunate about the conversion is you do lose the widgets. So I'm going to click on models, and then I'm going to add a timer. We'll do timer one, and then on this one, I'll select a timer and we'll do timer two. So you do, you know, the idea here, guys, it, again, it's unfortunate that we lose our widgets, but that's the way it is. So pour yourself a drink, relax, put your feet up, watch, watch a little YouTube and switch your stuff over and add your widgets back the way you want them. It's a good opportunity maybe to refresh your widgets if you want. But what I'm trying to show you here is that if I click on model and I start navigating and looking at my inputs, I've got aileron elevator throttle rudder, I've got my mixer. I've got my airplane. This is my model. It's not lost. We simply lost our widgets. That's all that happened here. Okay. So hopefully that makes sense. The other thing I want to show you two other things. We're going to look at the system uh, page and obviously we're on edge TX now 2.7.1. And the other thing I want to do is show you my system settings. I had some global functions set up. Remember GF one had SB up play track and it was blank. And then we added the gf2 with the uh, s1 switch and uh for for volume we added that one so this just shows you that my radio settings were converted right now i'm going to show you another thing on the radio real quick and that's what is left over on your radio that you no longer need so if we go in the models folder you see model one.bin model one.yaml model two.bin model two.yaml you can get rid of anything that ends in a dot bin it's no longer required in fact i'd recommend that you actually do delete it. So get rid of it because you don't need it. Just be careful not to delete your YAML file. And if you do, you got it's gonna it's another story. Just don't delete your YAML file. <laughs> so be very careful here. Make sure you're only deleting bin files. And notice what we're left with is model one, two, three, and four dot YAML. And we're left with models.yaml. Models.yaml now is the file that specifies your categories and your model names. Okay. In the radio folder, if I go back up one and go into the radio directory. We no longer need models.txt, you can delete that. And we no longer need radio.bin, you can delete that. And we're now converted to YAML. And I'm just gonna go ahead and reboot the radio to show you that Edge is not gonna yell at me for all that stuff I just deleted. So we'll just do a re reboot, and you'll see that I still have all my radio settings are still there. Let's look at system, look at radio settings, and I'll show you my global functions are still there. And we'll also look at our model settings. I'll long press the model button and you can see I still have my airplanes and my category listings. Okay, that's an official conversion 
to Edge TX. Now, the last thing I'm going to show you are I wanted to show you the scripts or the tools. So remember, we did a lot of work dropping stuff in here. We did the Free Sky SXR R9S Lua. We did the Grop Gropner Hot came with the multi protocol module. We did Express LRS. Remember, this was all erased. So, this is all stuff that we added. This is how I repopulate that tools folder. We've got our model locator. Uh, we've got a multi channel namer, the LOLI RX config, the multi config, PID DSM, and we even have our SXR calibrate. And there's TBS agent light down at the bottom. And uh, a wizard loader if you want to run that, and our little spectrum analyzer. It's all there. All right, guys, that wraps up my conversion video. And I'm going to take this as an opportunity just to say goodbye to OpenTX. And I'm going to tell you guys, listen, at the end of the day, if you like OpenTX and it works for you and you want to stick with it, go ahead. You don't need anybody on YouTube telling you you have to switch to EdgeTX. I can tell you from my own personal use, the reason I'm switching from, Edge, uh, from OpenTX to EdgeTX is because I believe EdgeTX is the path forward. And for me, I've already made the conversion. So I'm going to take this as an opportunity to say goodbye to OpenTX. This will be the last video on the channel related to OpenTX. I will no longer be producing OpenTX material. I'll be sticking 100% at this point with Edge TX. That is, of course, unless OpenTX does something astounding. If they do something amazing or you know they, they do some new thing that's not seen on Edge, I might revisit that at some point. But as far as the uh, standards go going forward, I'll, all my educational videos and model setup videos will be handled on Edge TX. So I hope you enjoyed the content. And if you do like this type of material, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you know when new videos hit the channel. Sorry about the mix up on the earlier live stream, but I hope this makes up for it. This is a much cleaner demonstration on how to make that conversion. That's all I've got for today. Take it easy. Hey, if you like the work I do here on RC Video Reviews, please consider joining me on Patreon. For about the price of a cup of coffee, you can help me keep making videos just like this one. If you'd like to help out, there's a link in the description and on your screen. Thank <laughs> you.